Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be looking at how to um, take one wall of this shed and recreate it with uh, draft arrays. My shed here, pictured here, as you can see, is you know a model I've been working on to improve my free CAD skills and understand some of the idiosyncrasies. But this model is generally individual components only. So each one of these is its own object. Let me show you. So I have them grouped as uh, the east wall in this group folder and you can see that each one is a separate object you can see my order of creation as well is not exactly and then I have the corner spacers each as their own separate object uh, what that does allow you is is you know individual control over each element but I think in a lot of cases once you understand the dimensions of a wall you don't need you don't need that individual control except if there's something like this door in it or a window as pictured here. So what I wanted to do with was uh, use this model as the uh, foundation for demonstrating how to create an array, uh, an array using the draft array tool. And that's this tool right here, uh, creates a polar or rectangular array. And they also refer to polar as orth ortho, I think. And we'll check that out when we get to it. Um, so let's get into making this this framed wall as using the draft array tool. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close out my shed. And let me save that real quick first. And let's... Uh, what we'll do is, what I'm going to do is, because it's not about the stud, so we're, I'm going to create a new one. And I'm just going to create one stud and then we'll go from there. So we'll copy a regular stud and just put that into the new document. So now I have a regular stud. So and we'll do the rest just uh, on the fly with, let me save that, with arrays. So let's bring our regular stud into view. So the first thing I want to do is I want to create both ends and that's as my framework. So the ends of the wall. So I am going to do that with array. That seems kind of overkill, but we're just, this is about arrays. So we're going to try to do as much as we can with arrays and it's, it's how to learn them. So this is going to be a rectangular, or you can see right here, it's called ortho. So it'd be nice if this tooltip matched this right here, but you know, that's nitpicky. The other type is you can do polar. And in that case, I think it matches the tooltip. Yep. So I'm going to be doing my wall, uh, basically along the Y axes. So I'm only going to need two on the Y axis and I'm going to need one on the X. And then I'm going to go to the Y axis and set the interval. And we're going to set that right at 10 feet. And uh, you know, I'm in America. So, and this is an American frame wall. So that basically defines my wall. So now to create the uh, in inner pieces, uh, I'm not going to do the, uh, uh, completely perfect wall. So my first one won't be like 15 and a quarter or whatever that first is. I'm not a builder either, so I'm not gonna get this exact, the build portion exactly right. So we'll copy this again. So we'll have a second set of regular studs and let's turn that on. And I'm gonna trans, I'm gonna use transform and I'm gonna set this to 1.5 inch cause that's the thickness of a stud. Um, actually, no, I'm gonna set this to 16 inch because the first stud is going to be 16 inches in. So that's, so you'll see that's my first stud now. So in my previous model, what I would have done is I would have just copied that the number of times I needed. But in the future, I'd like to be able to say, you know, here is the length of my wall and have a macro that just fills it with the components you need. So now let's create a second array with this stud. And again, we're going to be doing it in the Y direction. And I think we'll need about seven, I think. And we'll need to set the Y to 16 inches because that'll be, that's the centers. And did I get, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's what I needed. So um, if there's a builder out there, you'll see when I get done that this is gonna have a lot of three, uh, this back corner of the wall, is gonna have like a large number of stud. And what I'd like to know is if that's just something you have to live with or or you can or there's tricks so if you're a builder and you have a trick let me know so now let's just copy this regular stud again because we want to do um we want to do a stud here and a stud here and that's going to be for cornering 
So let's copy the, this initial regular stud instead so it's closer to where we need it and paste that in. So now I'm gonna transform this. I'm gonna do this by uh, 1.5 inches because that's the thickness. And I'm gonna do, I'm gonna basically move it twice. And I guess, I think I did that three times. Yeah, so you can see it's, because we're gonna have spacers in between. So let me move that back. Let me move it to where it's gonna be. And now let me show you why, um, what I should have done is created both of these first maybe. Cause here's, here's, uh, because what that would allow me to do is, instead of having two arrays, I could do one array with a fusion. But let's just do two arrays for now, and maybe I'll go back if there's time. So let's do the X as one. This is going to be as two. Now, this, this one's going to be a little harder because we have to figure out the measurement. But I think we can just do the math. And so it's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be 10 feet minus uh, 7 inches. So let's do that. So it's going to be... And you can do that right in 10 feet minus seven inches. So instead of like, uh, so nine feet, five inches. So you can do it the easy way. So I think I, did, I need to move this one back again. Yeah, so and I need to move this one up. So let's just, uh, so it's gonna be plus 1.5. So this is gonna be 6.5. Okay, so those are all in the correct positions. So this is gonna be, my, let's call this N stud array. Let's call this regular stud array. And let's call this uh, nailers. I don't know, nailers or corner, nailers corner, I don't know. Let's just call them corner studs. And then, so the final thing we want to do is, or final thing for these these members is, we want to create create spacers. So I'm going to create the regular, copy the regular stud again, and paste it in. And then we're going to change its height to one foot. Yeah, let's highlight it. So you see it's down there. So now let's transform that over by one width or one thickness of the stud, and let's move it up by a foot. So I'm going to put one foot there, and we're going to move it up by a foot. There we go. So now I want to array this so I have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to do array, and this is going to show you how to do two directions. So first we're going to do the, the Z dimension, and let's space them, um, I, and this, let's just try two feet. I really don't know the correct spacing, so we'll do this. That looks reasonable. So this one could be a little bit higher, but this is good enough for this type of work. So now I want to double this over here. Now you could do an array over an array, or you could just add a in in um, the number in the y direction. So we'll double up the y direction, and the next thing the thing we need to know is this dimension. So it's basically it's going to be uh, ten feet minus this first stud minus the second stud. So it's ten feet minus three inches. Uh, now I see why I got that previous one wrong. I was adding up the wrong dimension. So we'll do uh, 10 feet minus three inches. And I like to do things where I don't have to do too much work or think too much. So that's a little bit wrong. Oh, cause I, I did this one wrong somehow. Oh, yeah, I did that one wrong because of, uh, let's go. So we'll go back and do that one over again. So when I was uh, creating this array, I was adding up the long dimension, not the short dimension. So let's go back and fix that. Um, I think I'm going to leave that mistake in here. So, you know, so it's not like, Hey, look at this guy. He never makes any mistakes because I make a lot of mistakes and let's see, or was it corner studs? Okay. So this dimension should be 10 feet minus four thicknesses. So it's 1.5 each. So it's three on either. So it's six. So it's 10 feet minus six. And for those of you like me who hate doing any math, there we go. So that's all good. So the last thing we need to do is the plates. So let's do the plates. Um, so I'm going to copy another stud. I'll we'll put it here and copy it. Let's highlight it so we know it's there. And I'm going to transform this so it's on the horizontal plane. And we're just going to rotate that nine, uh, 90 degrees. 
So at, at which point you'll notice now it doesn't land on a stud. So uh, good building practices. I don't think for the bottom ones it matters, but for the top plates, you want the seam of these plates to match the stud. So we're gonna do that on this one just to make it easier. Now I could do a trim. Um, actually, maybe that's a, well, now let's use a measurement and a tr and uh, we so you know we could add up 16, 16, 16 and, and get our measurement that way, but when when the uh, math gets too complicated for my head, <laughs> we're gonna do it the easy way. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure the distance from this corner. So what I did was I set my working plane on this on this face right here, and I'm using the end snap tool. So I'm going to click on the end of that stud, and I'm going to use, then I'm going to use the middle snap. Probably didn't need to turn that one off to go to the first stud under eight feet. Let's just see if I can get the middle. So the funny thing about the middle snap is, boy, sometimes it just doesn't want to select things. So let's turn off this plate and see if I can get it selected. Yeah, it's not not selecting that for there it goes. So that was just to get my measurement. So it's six feet eight and three quarters inches. So now let's make this regular stud six feet, eight and three quarters inches. So six feet, 8.75 inch. And so now we have a stud that fits perfectly that'll end under that stud seam. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna add another stud that goes the rest of the distance. Uh, actually, no, I wanna do this. Do I wanna do this with an array? Yeah, I want to do this with an array. So I'm going to create another stud that goes the same distance or that, you know, and, and we're going to move this, transform this one. I should be able to get this one. All right. So if you if you end up with a, something in a place that doesn't uh, isn't where you need it, we're going to do a draft move. And I'm going to use endpoint. So I'm going to pick the endpoint of this stud. Get rid of middle point. Click that endpoint and we're going to move it right to... It's, uh, boy, it's fighting me these days. Let's see why, I don't know why. There, anyway, so I was, you, you see this, the snapping was getting confused. I'm not really sure why. Um, and let's measure this last one too. So let's do measure, we'll do midpoints, or no, uh, do mids and ends. Oops, sorry about that. Let's try that again. Let's hide this guy first, and let's try to get our measurement. So I'm going to measure from here, and we're going to measure all the way to the to the end. So that's three feet four and a quarter. Let's and let's put that measurement in. Three feet four and three quarters. Sorry. There we go. So that's how long I need my. So that's good. That's how I want my studs. So now let's array this to the top. And the only reason I'm doing this, it, you know, it seems silly. You could just easily copy this. But what I want to do is I want to show you if you want to array multiple elements, the first thing you're going to need to do is go to, over to your part workbench and combine them. So I'm going to create what up here is going to say make a union, but it's labeled as a fusion. Uh, and then so now I'm going to array this to the top. So let's go back to our draft and let's click array. And so this array is going to be in the Z direction. There'll be two of them. There'll be two of them. Those little arrows can be hard to click. And their distance, so we're gonna to go to interval Z. And what you can see is, so you have a lot of control over the distances in each interval. You can create an interval uh, distance of for Z in the Y interval, and it'll move it in the Z and the Y so you can make a lot of combinations that way. So this one's going to be, we're gonna to have to move this eight feet, I think, or is it eight feet, one and a half inches? Yeah, it's eight feet, one and a half inches. So I'll do 1.5, oh, cause we want it on top of the top plate. Um, yeah, and this, this I don't quite understand. It's sometimes the uh, measurements don't take. So now we have our top plate. And then the final thing we want is to create a second top plate but I don't think that gives us anything for this video. So I want you to encourage you to um, get into arrays because arrays can help you to really make complex objects very quickly. 
don't avoid them like I did. Uh, so for my next video, I'm going to be doing the polar array, and I have that. I have an example of what that's going to be. It's going to be this one, and it's going to be a bike wheel, and I'm going to be showing you how to lay out these rims with polar arrays. So hopefully I can get that done very quickly and have that up. And again, if you like my videos, please subscribe and click like and share them. That gets, you know, gets it out to more people. So have a great day and I'll see you in my next video.